I'm not ashamed. What was the second plague that God inflicted upon Egypt? This is the question that we seek to answer today as we continue our verse by verse study of the book of Exodus on walking through the Bible. His word, the glory of his cross. If you have a Bible with you, you can turn to Exodus chapter 8. We're going to be reading from verses 1 to 7. If you don't have a Bible, don't worry. Just follow along with us on the screen. The version that we'll be reading from is the New King James Version. So, Exodus chapter 8, beginning at verse 1. And the Lord spoke to Moses, Go to Pharaoh and say to him, Thus says the Lord, Let my people go, that they may serve me. But if you refuse to let them go, behold, I will smite all your territory with frogs. So the river shall bring forth frogs abundantly, which shall go up and come into your house, into your bedroom, on your bed, into your houses of your servants, on your people, into your ovens, and into your kneading bowls. And the frogs shall come up on you, on your people, and on all your servants. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, Say to Aaron, Stretch out your hand with your rod over the streams, over the rivers, and over the ponds, and cause frogs to come up on the land of Egypt. So Aaron stretched out his hand over the waters of Egypt, and the frogs came up and covered the land of Egypt. And the magicians did so with their enchantments, and brought up frogs on the land of Egypt. At the end of the last chapter, we had the completion of the first plague that God inflicted upon Egypt because of Pharaoh's disobedience in not letting the children of Israel go. The first plague was turning the water in the Nile River into blood. All of the surface water in Egypt became blood, causing all the fish to die and the waters to stink. The Egyptians were then forced to dig for water to drink. The river, though, didn't remain blood forever, for after a week it appears that things returned to normal. Now, since the magicians of Egypt, either through trickery or by the power of God, could also turn water into blood, Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he continued in his disobedience. Which brings us to the second plague. The Lord again told Moses and Aaron to go to Pharaoh and demand that he let the children of Israel go. If he again wouldn't heed their voice, they were to tell Pharaoh what would happen next, that all the territory of Egypt would be smitten with frogs. These frogs would come forth from the river and would be everywhere, in the people's houses, in their bedrooms, on their bed, in their servants' houses, in their ovens, and in, need, in their kneading bowls, and upon themselves. Of course, we know that frogs live in streams and rivers, and in the proper quantity serve a purpose in their ecosystem. However, these small creatures can be a nuisance if they appear in such great quantities. Like the Nile River turning reddish color like blood, frogs coming up out of the Nile River was again a natural phenomenon. However, in the first plague, God didn't turn the Nile River red. He turned it into blood, even though this looked to imitate something that occurred naturally. So too with this plague. Normally, frogs would come forth from the Nile. However, the miracle was the quantity and the intensity with which they came forth. To go along with this, just like the Nile River was worshipped by the Egyptians, so too was the frog, for the Egyptians had a female deity with a frog's head. So again, God is using the idolatrous worship against them, plaguing them with those things they worshipped. Pharaoh again did not heed the word of the Lord, and so again Aaron stretched forth his rod over the streams, rivers, and ponds, and the frogs came forth, just as the Lord had said. That that many frogs appeared could not be explained using natural means, for frogs simply don't reproduce at that rate. If this was something that happened in Egypt regularly, the Egyptians wouldn't have been alarmed, and God's power wouldn't have been magnified. However, God's hand is present here, and he miraculously caused the frogs to reproduce, for if he can speak this universe into existence simply by the word of his power, he can create thousands and thousands of frogs to come forth from the river. And you would think that after this miracle, surely Pharaoh would recognize what had happened and that it was from the Lord. But no, again, Pharaoh called his magicians to see if they could do the same thing. And again, the magicians could. This is the third time that the magicians could copy the signs displayed by Moses and Aaron. Now, how did they do this? Perhaps they did this by sleight of hand, fooling Pharaoh into believing that they produced more frogs. But what is more likely is that the Lord allowed them to perform this miracle. We had stated this as a possibility when discussing the other two instances, but it appears to be even more likely here. Just as it was with the witch of Endor, God does allow miracles to be performed by evil people who do not possess that power themselves, if it will serve his purpose. By calling the magicians, Pharaoh was still not ready to accept that this was the power of God working through Moses and Aaron. So God allowed Pharaoh to harden his heart. 
Whatever way these magicians produce these frogs, as we will find in the next episode, they do not have the power to remove them, for Pharaoh is going to call Moses and Aaron to do that. We'll continue with this story, the Lord willing, in the next episode. With that, our time is up for today. Lord willing, we hope you'll join us for tomorrow's discussion of Exodus chapter 8, verses 8 to 15, as we continue our walk through the Bible, one verse at a time. I'm not a Thank you for watching today's episode. We hope that you found it edifying and ask that you not only subscribe to our channel and podcast, but that you like and share this episode among your friends so that the saving gospel of Jesus Christ can go out to the whole world.